Hello guys, this is Pants36, and today's video is going to be a little bit of a discussion where I try to clear up and answer some of the common misconceptions and questions that are very frequently posted in the comments section of my top 5 beginner wearing effects video. And these questions are always surrounding, oh, the ones that we're going to look at at least, are the ones that are always surrounding my use of oil paints for the effects that I showed, which were the pin wash and the dot streaking effect. People are always asking or telling me that they were using acrylic paints for this effect and it like ruins their model basically and the, that's the reason why I'm using oil paint not acrylic paints they are very different in how they work and so it's important that you use these or enamels, we'll talk about enamels later but use something like this instead of acrylic paints for those effects we're going to talk about why in this video I know I have a little bit of cold right now which is why my voice is a little bit weird hopefully I don't, I don't lose my voice halfway through this video but we're just going to talk about it now because had some comments recently and uh, it's all kind of still in my head so I want to answer it now while I can. So I know that a lot of people who are asking those questions are beginners, that's what that video is meant to, that the audience meant for that video basically. And when I was a beginner I did a lot of the same things you're saying, using acrylic paints for pin wash, streaking like that, and I ruined a lot of models. So I'm not trying to say you guys are dumb, because you're not, you're just learning like everybody else including myself. I'm just trying to pass on my knowledge and experience through doing a couple of years of this and mainly my passion of weathering, which is what that video was about. I'm going to pass on my knowledge from that towards you guys so you can improve a little bit faster and ruin less models. Because everybody ruins a couple of models when they start. You still should ruin a couple because it's good practice, but um, I, I want you guys to learn. I want, I want to help you guys learn, basically. So, the reason why, there's two reasons why. The two reasons why you want to use oils and not acrylic paints for those weathering effects is that oils and enamels, but we'll talk about that later. We should look at oils for now. Oils have a very, very long working time and they can be reactivated without destroying the base paint of your model. Essentially, that to, to clarify that, that basically means that these dry very, very slowly and when I use the thinner to streak them or clean them up, I'm not going to destroy the previous base paint or anything like that on my model. Because these dry, they just dry slowly in general and the thinner I use, that, that you should use to thin them down and then clean them up at the end will not affect the varnish or the base paints on your model because the varnish is like a lacquer or acrylic based and the base paints are acrylic based. If I were to do the same type of effect, dot filter effect or a pin wash, using acrylic paints, you're going to have some problems because the acrylic paints dry super fast and they dry into a permanent plastic finish so the types of thinner you're going to have to use to clean them up, which are the same types of thinner you probably use to thin them down when you were applying them as the base paint the model, or even thin them down to make the pin wash consistency you were, you were applying. When you try to use these thinners to clean them up, those type of thinners are also going to attack the lacquer or acrylic varnish, and then underneath it the acrylic base paints on your model. So that will destroy the finish of your model. Again, these the thinner that these use, like lighter fluid works equally well as any store-bought branded thinner that will not affect the varnish mainly and the acrylic paint if you use a good quality one but if you use a varnish you should be fine anyways because that protects the finish <laughs> let's go into a little more detail about this okay so if I'm applying these products I want to make a pin wash I thin it down with this thinner and then I apply it as a long working time so I can be very very methodical in how I'm applying around the rivets and the weld seams and everything like that I have a long time hours, maybe five hours, as I'm applying it, so I can be very, very slow and careful, and if there's a little bit of excess right after I apply it, I can take another brush or anything like that, and I can wipe it away immediately before it dries, because it dries in five hours. Then, after it's dried in five hours, if I want to remove it for any number of reasons, including the color is bad, I want to remove the whole weathering effect I just applied, or there's a little bit of excess here, or I don't like how it looks over there, whatever, I can take my whatever brush over here, Take a little bit of the same thinner I'm using, which is the lighter fluid or store-bought enamel oil thinner, you know, white spirit, whatever you want to call it. You, you can take some of that in your brush and you can wipe away the excess or the whole effect you just applied without damaging anything else in your model thanks to your application of a varnish. Because the varnish will not be thinned down or reactivated or destroyed by this type of thinner. Also, this stuff doesn't dry very durably, so you can be very, very gentle in your, in your removing, you know, you, to, you can just gently rub it away, you don't have to like scrape it off or anything like that. This stuff dries very not durably, and it has a very like, gentle thinner, basically, that won't damage your model. 
Now I take some of this stuff and try to do an acrylic pen wash. So I, this is the stuff I use on my base, well, for the base paint the model, essentially, basically, a different color, but whatever. And let's use the same type of thinner I used when I airbrushed it on. So I'm thinning this down to the consistency of a pin wash or whatever, and now I'm applying it. It's drying super fast. So I'm applying it around the bolts, and it's drying faster than I can kind of touch it up. It's drying in seconds. So I'm getting excess everywhere anyways. And then I apply the whole effect, and there's a couple of spots I don't like it, so there's, you know, like I was saying previously with this stuff, there's excess I want to clean up over there as well. But in general, there's a whole lot of excess because it's drying faster than I can apply it where I want it to. So I'm like, oh, let's, like, pens are my show in the video, I'm going to take a little bit of thinner on my brush, the same type of thinner I was using to thin it down, and we're going to remove it. Like, remove the excess, or remove the whole effect if you don't want the color. And then you start to do that, and it's not coming off, because it's it's plastic. Well, when acrylic paint dries, it dries basically into a plastic. So it's not coming off, so rubbing, rubbing, rubbing. And then it just takes everything off, because all the paint has, since it's all acrylic or whatever based, it's all kind of glued into one layer because it's dried into a plastic and it doesn't want to come off because it's all together as one and then this thinner starts to attack everything because your base paints, your varnish and the paint you just applied with the pin wash or whatever weathering effect it was can all be basically thinned down or be reactivated in a destructive manner, not the same kind of reactivation with this with the thinner you're now using to try to remove or remove the excess of the effect you just applied so I'm going to do a clarification here I said that these, like I remember I said, these are very, they don't dry very durably, so you can be very gentle in the removing of them. Acrylic paints dry very durably and dry into a plastic finish, like I said, so you cannot really reactivate them um, in the same way you can these. You can reactivate these and brush it away gently and everything will be fine. You reactivate this, it will destroy your model, basically. It's, it's bad, because this stuff doesn't really reactivate in a nice way, and... Like I said, the thinner you're using to reactivate it will destroy the paint in your model that was already applied as well. Hopefully that clears it up. Uh, I want to summarize it again. This stuff dries super slow and doesn't dry very hard, so you can reactivate it and clean up any excess easily with a thinner that will not damage your model. If you try to use the same thing with acrylic paint, um, it, it dries super fast. You're getting tons of excess and you want to remove that excess. The thinner you're going to use to remove that excess will start to damage your model because the thinner you're applying there will try to attack all the paint on the model anyways in the same way that the paint stripper would. So, yeah, it's not going to go well. Um, I hope that clears up the idea. I know why people are doing this, though, because when I started up, I, I saw the same kind of thing, and I thought, oh, I can use acrylic paints, because when you're starting up, you don't have very many different types of paint. You're on a low budget. You have your acrylic paint you use to do the, the base color, so you think, I can just use this because all paints are the same, maybe. Or... You don't have enough money to buy all these expensive products you see on the internet and stuff like that and you want to just work with what you have. The thing is, oil paints are actually very, very cheap. We're gonna, now, I think we've kind of completed the whole comparison between this and this now. Hope that's, hope that's clear. If you're doing the effects I showed in the video, please use the same type of paint. Not the same brand, but the same type of paint. Oil and the parts I'm using oils. And the part where I'm doing chipping, use acrylic paints there because you don't need to clean that up. You're supplying little bits of paint. It's basically like base painting anyways. Uh, it's different. You're not using a lot of thinner for that, that, that technique. If you're doing a technique like I show with a lot of thinner required, use this stuff here. Oils. Or enamels, and we'll cover that right now. So, today I got a comment, basically people were, somebody was asking me, they were being very rude about it. Basically they were, they were saying that, oh, I can use acrylic paints because these exist and these are acrylics. Well, they're not. These are enamel-based products, and they work a lot like these, not like this acrylic paint. So, these are oil paints over here, this is my thinner. These are enamel effects, they use the same thinner. They are very, very similar. They work the same kind of way, but these are basically this the store-bought pre-mixed weathering products that are enamel-based, and these are tubes of oil paint. One of these cost me anywhere from eight, nine, to sixteen dollars. And one of these cost me about four dollars or less. And these things last forever because you are buying a tube of pigment. And this, you are buying a bottle of 90% thinner and 10% pigment. So you can buy basically 10 of these and a big bottle of lighter fluid. You don't need to buy this special stuff here. You can buy a big bottle of lighter fluid. You can buy 10 of these a big bottle of lighter fluid for the same price as you can buy 5 of these. And I've already got tons more color variation. And this is going to last me a lot longer. This is an oil paint tube I've had for 7 years, I think, now. 
and I've used it on most of my models because I basically pin wash everything brown and it's maybe 25% gone. I use this uh, Sin Industries blue Panzer Grey filter on two models and it's like 80% gone. I'm going to basically use that for one more model if I even ever use it again, which probably won't because I prefer these for the reasons I'm talking about right now. These are individually cheaper than these and they last dozens of dozens of times longer. So they're cheaper in the long run and cheaper per item. And also they're a lot more versatile because um, you can thin it down to whatever consistency you want immediately. Um, let's get, let's uh, get something out of the way here. So a filter is a super thin coat of paint you apply to change the color, whatever like that. A filter is super thin, pin wash is a little bit thicker, uh, streaking effects are thicker than that, and then dot filter effects you basically want to apply really, really thick dots. So you have different consistencies you want there, obviously. These are each tailored towards a certain consistency for whatever technique they want to be. So you've got a filter here, streaking effects, I've got a wash over here. So this is going to be thin, this is going to be a little bit thicker, this is going to be a lot thicker than that. And the problem with that is, if I just, let's say I want to do a blue filter and a blue pin wash and a blue streaking effect. I can buy this, I can buy this, and I can thin it down to three different consistencies, and I can do that three times. If I wanted, like, I, like I can't do that with this, because this is already thin to a filter, it's too thin to be able to do a pin wash or a streaking effect. I cannot really thicken it, I just can only really thin, the, thin it more, but it's already thinner than I want it to be for the other effects. So I'm gonna have to buy another one of these, which is thicker, which is for a wash, like I guess this one, or there you go. And this is like a bluish one, so I'll have to buy this again. I'll have to buy one of these. So now I'm buying three of these when I only needed to buy this, and I already had this because I bought a bulk container of it years ago. So you can see this is cheaper per item, cheaper in the long run, and you have to buy basically like multiple to do each effect when you only need to buy one of these per color. So it's cheaper for three different reasons. And I know people are going to say, well, then you can just go buy the thickest option, the streaking effect, and then you can thin it down. Um, to get the three different whatever consistencies for the three different effects. What you've just done is you bought a convenience product and then now you're buying the thinner and you're thinning it down and now it's, what was the point of buying the convenience product when you could just bought this and thin it down in the same way you're doing it with that now. And this is cheaper and you know and the reason why you're buying all this is because you want to be convenient and now you're just making it not convenient for yourself by thinning it down instead of just buying multiple products. So my whole point here is that these both, I'm not trying to bash these. these, these work well. I know people like the convenience product, that's why they're convenience products, they're convenient. But these are cheaper, and that's why I prefer these. The guy posted a comment today, whatever, saying like, oh, you're trying to look super pretentious and rich by showing all your oil paints when you could just easily use these acrylic weathering effects. First of all, these are enamels. Second of all, I'm not trying to look rich. I am poor, I'm a university student, that's why I'm using these. Like I said, they're cheaper for three different reasons compared to this. All right, so, that's my whole rant here. These both work the same way. They are both good products, but you buy them for different reasons. You buy these because they're cheaper, and you buy these for the convenience sake, but they're more expensive. If, if you don't care about the cost, then go ahead and buy these. Like, I have all these for a reason. I bought them when I was starting out. Not really when I was starting out, but a few years after I started out. And I use them well, but they're expensive. These are, I use these now because they're cheaper, and they last me a lot longer. Um, and I know that, we're going to kind of go back to the acrylics here. I know that some, another reason why, I said before, the reason why people are using these to weather when they're you're supposed to be using these is because they just have them on hand and they're like, well, I can use this because all the paint's the same or they don't really understand how all the different types of thinners and everything like that all works together and how some attack others but some don't. Another reason why you might think that is you might see, like the guy in the video said, you saw this and you think, oh, that's, that's an acrylic product so I can weather with acrylics. Or you see these two products over here and these are actually marketed as acrylic weathering products. Um, and then you think, oh, well, then I can make my own pin wash with acrylic paint. The thing is, all the acrylic weathering products you see out there, are a, they work a lot differently, and they're not the same type of acrylic as if you were to just take your Tammy acrylic paint and thin it down and make your own custom acrylic weathering product. These are different. This one here, the Snow product here went by Wild. These are these are both good. But I'm not trying to say these are like terrible products, but they're they're not the same as like this. They're a special acrylic, and that's why they're marketed as a weathering product. This is not marketed as a weathering product. This Snow product here is like a plastic or not pl plaster sort of stuff with water kind of as a thinner. So it's not acrylic paint, and also the thinner in it 
is not this, which you were using if you're using a pin wash with this. So since the, the thinner is water when you apply it, it's not going to like peel off the paint because it's not using a, a harmful thinner, which will damage your varnish or your base paint. It's special. And also it can kind of be reactivated, so I don't think it's really a true acrylic in the same way that this is. This here is marketed as a reactivatable acrylic effect, which is sort of true, but it's not it's not acrylic paint like this. It is a gouache, or like a thick water, gouache isn't exactly thick watercolor, but it's very, very similar to a thick watercolor paint. So, much like the one I just showed you, it uses water as a thinner, and it's not, like it's not really an acrylic, it's a gouache or a watercolor. It also smells like vanilla, which is excellent. These, these are definitely good, but they are not, and though it is, I guess you could say that a gouache is technically an acrylic, but I want to point out that it's a different type of acrylic than if I were to use this or Vallejo or whatever and try to make the same thing. It's not going to work because this is not going to reactivate and if I try to reactivate it with the thinner here, like I said before, it'll tear off all the paint on my model because everything else on there is already acrylic and it's just going to melt it all the way to the plastic. This will reactivate with water, so I don't need this and the water is not harmful and it will not damage the base paints or the, um, the, or the varnish and also it won't even damage these because oil and water don't mix so I can actually apply this and then I can apply this without a varnish and it will not damage this pretty cool stuff like that you can layer all these different techniques that's the kind of stuff you get with experience and hopefully I haven't got confusing at the end here by comparing all these different products but I guess I'll summarize it again alright oils oils and enamels are very similar they work the same way these are not acrylics these are enamels they work the same way they use the same type of thinner Oils are cheaper, but they both work the same way. And the reason why you use these for weathering is that they have a long drying time, so you can be very methodical when you're applying it. And um, and then if there's excess, or you want to clean up any extra or whatever, or clean up the whole thing, you can use a thinner, which will not oops, which will not damage anything you've done in the model already that's acrylic based. Your varnish will protect it. If you try to do the same thing with your Tamiya paints or any other acrylic paint that you use to base paint the model. Um, it has a very fast drying time, and if you try to reactivate it, you will you will damage in, in the act of, of trying to remove it, and also using the thinner you're trying to use to remove it. Both those will combine to destroy the finish in your model because everything you've already applied in there is the same type of paint, and so that thinner will basically attack it all and destroy it. And then I know there are acrylic weathering effects, but they are different than if you were to use the Tamiya paint. Hopefully, I have cleared this up. I'm not, uh, like I said before, I'm not, I'm not trying to say you guys are dumb if you're having these problems. Everybody has these problems. I have these problems. I've got some stud threes in my shelf over there with like big acrylic rust streaks on the side. It looks terrible, but it was fun at the time. And I did ruin a couple models with oil, with uh, acrylic pin washes. It's what happens to everybody. I'm just trying to pass on my knowledge to help you guys progress a little bit faster and better understand the reasons why I'm using in that video oil paints and not acrylics for those certain weathering effects. And I do recommend. If you are starting out weathering, even if it's going to cost you $15 or maybe something like that, get maybe only a small thing of lighter fluid, a brown, a black, and a beige oil paint. I recommend this brand, Windsor & Newton Winton Oil Color. The best i found artist brand for modeling. If you can get the wilder stuff, that's even better, but that's hard to find. It in, like You can go to an art, an art store and get some of this stuff. It's a lot more common. So you get a brown, a beige, and a, and a black. Preferably of this brand, but any brand should work. Oil paint and get their thing of lighter fluid at the gas station, whatever like that. And just try out those weathering effects I showed you. It'll cost you, like I said, $15, whatever like that. But that'll be a very, like a low cost introduction to the weathering effects there. And hopefully that'll let you see that oils are very, very versatile. They're very comfortable to work with because of the long drying time and they can be reactivated very easily. And they're just like, they're, they're my favorite. I love these. <laughs> um, like you could also buy some of these. These are a lot more expensive. If you're a beginner, I recommend you go with the basics. Black, brown, beige, this. Or something equivalent to this lighter fluid, like I said. And just try out the basic weathering effects. With a black and a brown, you can mix those together and make a pin wash, like a dark brown pin wash. With the brown and the beige, you can apply those individually to make some rusty effects or some dusty effects. Whichever one you like, you can those three colors will be able, will let you be able to do a lot of weathering effects which will they're all basic but they do have a very very nice effect in that video the top five beginner weathering effects video I showed a couple of basic weathering effects and you can see that 
especially the pin wash. It has a very, very good effect on the model. It's also pretty easy to do. Um, just I recommend if you want to try it, get some oil paints, not the acrylic paints. And hopefully that clears this up. But if you have questions or comments, always post. I'm not, I'm not, I'm not I, I do like replying to comments and helping people out. I'm just posting this video here, hopefully to get out to more people and um, clarify some of the reasons there. My voice is starting to go now. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Thanks for watching, guys. Um, huge thanks to my Patreon supporters and my PayPal supporter. You guys helped me buying all these, mainly these expensive products. These are cheap, though, but these are expensive. You guys are really helpful in supporting me. It means a lot to me. And as always, I will see you in the next video. Thanks for watching. Uh, goodbye and happy modeling and good luck with the weathering. See you then.